Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Today we're going to be working on a 2004 Hyundai Sonata V6. We're going to be replacing the rear rotors and pads. So let's go ahead and start off by jacking up the vehicle. I'm jacking it up at the pinch point on the frame where you would jack up your car in case you got a flat tire. And then of course, I'm going to put a jack stand in the pinch point just in case the jack fails. Always want to do that. So next we want to remove the wheel, but first you have to remove the center cap. I'm just sticking a flathead, trying it back. It's off. Then I'm going to use a, what is this? Um, 13 sixteenths to remove the four um, wheel nuts. So next we're going to want to take off the caliper. First, stick a flat head in, pry the piston in, that's all done. Now you're going to want to take um, a 14 millimeter socket to get the push pin bolts off. You go up, it's a little bit of effort. Ah, there we go. That is loose. The one on the bottom, same thing. There we go. Go ahead and take them out. One and two. Then I'm going to take the caliper off, dust out. Um, I actually push the caliper in or the piston in a little bit more. Because uh, it's going to need that space when all the new equipment's on, all the new parts on. And I just set it on the brake line. Um, now I'm going to pull the push pins out with the rubber boots because I'm going to clean them up. And then, luckily, this is surprising and pretty cool for this car, um, the caliper brackets are held on also with a 14 millimeter um, bolt. Uh, let's get a breaker bar. A little weak, or my arms a little weak because uh, I messed up. I pulled the tendon in my wrist. Uh, there we go. There's one. And one on the bottom. There we go. Let me get the camera and show you exactly where they are. Sorry, I know it's out of focus, but there's this bolt and there's one on the below it that I'm uh, undoing. That is 14 millimeter that holds the bracket on. So now I'm just going to keep. Uh, I'm going to put a put the 14 millimeter on a wrench. You could do this with hand tools. Um, I might have some hand tools on order, um, or not some hand tools, some air tools on order that um, I'll show you. When I do, when they get in, I can do my next video that will make these jobs quite a bit easier. Do it now, it's about finger tight. There we go, all done. done. Now for the one at the bottom, same thing, 14 millimeter. Use the breaker bar to loosen it. I mean, you could use just a regular socket, but my wrist is pretty, it's pretty banged up. Uh, let's see if it's finger, yep. It's my finger, see it all done. Now, take the caliber racket off, you can see it. Oh, so there might be the reason for the noise. Let's take a hammer. Nope. 
I think that's the grinding that they're hearing. Whoops, the customer that when I got in the car to bring it in the garage was making a horrible grinding noise. And I think I found it. The exact same issue that my brother had on his Hyundai. What was his? It was a uh, Santa Fe, and this is a Sonata, but they're based on the same platform. And his emergency brake had actually it basically opened up inside the drum and I literally think that's what happened in this one because the backing plate is gone and I'm pretty sure that's what happened. Um, so I'm gonna work at this for a while. It's gonna be a little bit to get this off um, but I'll come back and explain how I did it. Alright so I'm gonna bring you back and show you what I'm doing. So it is what happened. The actual emergency brake pad has disintegrated and it's in pieces in the rotor. So all I'm doing is hammering it off. Um, the other side of the car was it had no pad, uh, emergency brake pad. So this one just disintegrated. And I've seen this before on these cars. And as you can see, this is, if you can see, this is emergency brake pad. There's nothing left of it. Um, and basically, it's literally flaking off. It's just flaking off the uh, the metal backing. There's that. Ah, see, there is. It just came off. Um, so now, I mean, I'm going to tell the customer that it's like this. Um, they're going to have to get it replaced, um, and then go from there. I don't even think the adjuster, which is in the bottom, is that the adjuster? I have light. I guess you'd use it. Um, yeah, there's the adjuster. Let's see if I can get any movement out of it. Just like a gear at the bottom. And, and it, it ain't moving. Um, so hopefully when I put the new rotor on, it'll fit in here. We'll see what happens. Let's go to the workbench. Before we go to the workbench, I actually want to take the, the new rotor. I'm going to go ahead and slap it on here. Get these holes to line up. See, it's okay. So we've got, we've got free movement. Um, before I slap it on though, I'm going to go ahead and take some air. And I'm going to air off, get anything that all the broken pieces off. I'm gonna, you know, inform the customer that this is what's happening. Um, I would like to adjust the uh, the emergency brake, adjust it in, but I can't. It's rusted together. Um, so now let's go to the workbench. We know that the noise is gonna be gone. When I was turning the old rotor, you would hear like, and I couldn't even turn it. Um, so now that that's done, let's go to the workbench and clean up the uh, uh, caliper bracket. And let's put the pads in it. All right, so now we're going to clean off the uh, caliper bracket. It's where the pad sits and all that jazz. You want it clean because um, the pads should just go in easily. Shouldn't have to, you know, like force them in. Um, and what's on there? There's a side here and a side here. Um, it's just old uh, brake dust. So I'm using what's left of my uh, bit. And just clean it off. If the air compressor comes on. I'm sorry, I most likely will. Notice that down in here there was uh, some metal flick, flakes, um, but that's because the basically the it was the rear pad um, was on metal. Um, if the lens is getting dirty, um, was on metal and wearing into the into the rotor. Um, now, when it's the rear one, you might want to worry um, that your piston is stuck. But in this case, I was able to compress the piston with my hand. So I'm not too worried. Um, not too sure why it did what it did. Um, not too sure why the backing plates on these Hondas of this age disintegrate off. 
and then destroy the emergency brake, but it happens. Okay, so I am content with how clean that is. All right, I'm back, the tank's off. My brother just got an, what is it called? An Apple Watch? I'm kind of jealous. It looked nice on my wrist, or just because it's expensive, and expensive things look nice on anybody. So anyways, got some anti-seize. Hoodoo. Um, putting it where the bracket's gonna go on both sides. This basically stops from squeaking, as much squeaking as can be stopped. Um, you know, I don't want my customers to come back and like, oh, my brakes are squeaky, what's wrong? You did something wrong. I didn't, just metal makes noise. Um, and then we put basically the, sadly the new kit doesn't come with a um, good set of shoes or new shims, so I gotta use the old ones. Um, I would clean them, but recently I was working on a car and I cleaned them, and to clean it, broke apart. So I'm kind of too scared to do that again. Um, had to buy shoes, new shims for the customer, and you know, it, it that made the job take longer. But I will, on the pads, where they touch, shimmy, shimmy, shim. Hopefully you can see that. Just putting some more anti-seize. Um, <laughs> clean up my hands from the anti-seize. Uh, there we go. Um, drop it into place. So this is the considered the the one that faces out of the vehicle, and then um, the one that faces the interior of the vehicle, the inside of the wheel well, um, has a little uh, indicator, a metal indicator on it, lets you know when your your pads are getting low, makes them squeak. Um, oddly enough, these the other one, the ones I took off had the indicator, but there was no. No sub. I think it actually broken off because it was literally metal on metal. So basically, you just stick them in, and that's that's it. It's done. Um, that simple. Um, now let's go back to the vehicle. All right. So now what we want to do is we want to take our caliber bracket and go ahead and uh, slip that on there. Um, there is a difference between the push pin bolts and the caliber bracket bolts. The thread area where the threads are, they are thicker. They also have a crush washer on them. Um, so just go ahead and stick it in. Um, if you just move the, the caliper bracket around, if you can't find the hole, just move the caliper around a bit. Um, the bolt will guide itself in to its threads. Got lucky on this time, I just went in. Um, go ahead and take your 14 and uh, tighten them down. Sorry for my arms in the way or it's getting dark. One of the lights went out in, uh, my in the garage. So um, that explains why it's darker than usual. Um, so down, that's why I'm going that direction. Just being, they're just being difficult. Um, and I'm embarrassing myself with how difficult to be. Um, there we go. And it down. <clears throat> there we go. I'm gonna come back with a breaker bar for that. Want to make sure those are tight. Um, I actually have a uh, torque wrench, um, so I can do proper torques um, on order. They're they're expensive, <laughs> but I want to know that I'm doing the job right. I want to know that I'm keeping my customers safe. Um, but I've ne never had an issue though, like never had a, a caliper um, come off on me because um, the bolt's too loose. Never had that happen. So I'm just taking a breaker bar, making sure that's on there nice and tight. Um, next one, or the, the lower one, get on there. Sound there nice and tight. All right, so now um, we have our push pins. Um, and I'm gonna push pins right here. Um, the actual boot's kind of dirty. The actual boot should actually probably be replaced. 
Um, that's something I'll mention to the customer, but you just stick the boot on. Um, take the boot off the other one. Put the boot on. Um, I'm taking a paper towel. I'm cleaning it. I'm looking at them. You can see I'm looking at the the push pins. They look fine. They came out easy. Um, so nothing's wrong with them. I am using um, I'm gonna re-grease them. Now I, I take them out because even though like they uh, when I compressed the caliper they moved, I still like to examine them, make sure nothing's wrong with them. Just because they move doesn't mean you don't have rust accumulating in there. So anyways, um, I'm using some um, piston lube. Um, and basically you just stick the, the push pin in, push it in hard. These ones you don't have to burp for some reason to the other side, didn't have to burp them. Maybe because they're so short, not too sure. Um, are you still recording? Okay, good. I'm kind of flying through this one. Um, same thing with the bottom one, putting the push pin in. Then uh, taking the caliper. Sit it up. These push pins have to be, there's a flat spot on them. You want them so that they fit, the flat spot fits up against this, the top and the bottom. And I think I gotta push the piston in. Yep, I gotta push it in a little bit more. Or you can push it in by hand, your, your piston's fine. The boot is in perfect shape. There's nothing to, nothing worn or anything on there. Just hit it down in. Now you take your, uh, uh, oops, that, Oh, that's no good. The bleeder cover thing is uh, bad. So then you take your uh, pushpin bolts, um, tighten them up in your push pins, like so. Again, I apologize about the light being kind of dim. Oh, it's not too bad. You guys can, you guys can see. Um, and take the breaker bar. Sorry, get that a little bit tighter. Take the breaker bar, make sure that's nice and tight. I mean, I am going to be the next one taking it off, so I guess as long as it's my torque, I don't know how tight it is, um, or I'm just talking. I don't really know what I'm saying. That's possible. Alright, I'm happy with how tight that is. Alright, so let's go ahead and put the wheel on. Alright, take the wheel. I'm going to put this on. Line up the holes. And I am struggling. Like <laughs> I'm complaining and whining. My wrist really hurts. Um, go ahead and put the lug nuts on. If you're hearing like a hum or a breeze, um, my dad bought me a uh, like a propane heater. It's cold today in New York. I'm sweating. That's how good this thing is working. Um, all right, so I got 80 foot pound or 80 foot pound torque um, stick on and forward. Let's go ahead and put the wheel on. So that right there, that's when you know it's tight. It's not moving anymore. All right, let's do the next one. It's tight. Tight. All right, there we go. Moving jack stand. Lower your vehicle. I'm gonna make sure that you guys can still see because the car did move. You can. Now with the car on the ground, I like to make sure that I got 80 foot pounds. That's definitely tight, definitely tight, definitely tight, there you go, there you are, definitely tight. Take the cap, the cap does have a very specific way that it goes on, 
um, fits into some grooves in the rim. And all right, so that's how you replace rear rotors and pads on a 2004 um, Hyundai Sonata. Um, you're going to want to get in, turn the car on, pump your brakes before you start driving first so you can uh, build the pressure back up in the calipers. Um, I think the same thing goes for a couple, I mean I would even say like maybe across the 2004 line of Hyundai's because um, on my brother's 2003 Hyundai Santa Fe, exact same thing. Um, so thanks for watching. Um, if you like, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comment section. I always try to answer. Um, and if you'd like to subscribe, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next Monday.